You ready to get him? Of course. All right, here we go. Oh boy, he's gonna be fussy. I am Stacy Murphy. I am Mike Murphy. And we are the parents of Jasper Murphy. In 2018, um, Mike and I had just became licensed medically fragile foster parents and um, had gotten a few calls here and there for placements. Uh, one day we got the call for Jasper. Um, they told me like three sentences. He has Crabs disease. Um, he's had a transplant and he just finished a round of chemo and that's all we know. Are you interested? So we said yes um, and went down the following week to Nishoi Children's Hospital and did seven days of continuous care for him. So I Googled it and we didn't find much information. Um, everything that I read in depth was too uh, hard for me to understand. Sure. Um, and then the, the things that I could understand was that he wasn't going to live past two and that was, you know, something scary. The first initial kind of meeting I had with him, I walked in this hospital room by myself. No one was, you know, no doctors, no nurses. It was, um, I think it was a Monday at like 7 p.m. So the nursing staff had changed, um, was changing shifts. And so I walked in this room and I FaceTime Mike and Mike's like, what's he like? And I'm like, well, I've made noise and I've, I, you know, I've turned on lights and this kid's not moving. Super tiny, super fragile. This is a rare disease, very rare disease. It's still evolving, people are learning. We have a background at Child Nationwide Children, so I worked there for many years, and then of course Mike's been there a long time. And then our oldest son has been getting treatment with NCH for 15 years. I think we were good people to take Jasper on because we have um, experience with navigating that healthcare system. Now, have we ever dealt with BMT or oncology? No, never. But we know the social workers, we know the avenues to call, we know how to get a hold of patient relations. Like we, and we needed and I quite a few of those people. I one of the therapists coming in and um, realizing it was you. Because she started crying, uh, saying he's got a chance. <laughs> When we walked in that hospital, or me that first time, the transplant was done, the chemo was done. We were just dealing with the aftermath of all of this and not even understanding what that looked like. I mean, he was in and out of the hospital a lot. He was admitted and discharged four times, alone when they're inpatient, and uh, our foster kids are no different. And so typically we would do week on, week off, I would stay a week at the hospital and Mike would stay a week. Mike works at the hospital, so basically when it was his week. I there. Yeah. Take a shower, room. <laughs> and then he'd go downstairs and clock in. Um, I would get Caleb and Grayson up and ready and out the door for the bus. And then I would run down to Children's. Um, we would meet in the hallway. Typically, I would bring in his coffee and we would exchange highs and I'd give him his coffee and he'd go downstairs to clock in and I'd sit with Jasper um, the rest of the day. As soon as he would get off of work, he'd come back upstairs and I'd come home and be with the boys and do dinner and uh, baths and homework, whatever. I think the biggest challenge for us was we were told we weren't allowed to go anywhere. So he had no immune system. Him being transplanted, um, I think it was five weeks, six weeks, um, and the chemo had been started and you know by nine weeks he had been transplanted and chemo done was it a rough road yes did he you have some nasty nasty effects from that absolutely but as you can tell from spending some time with us this kid's living his best life and he doesn't know <laughs> that there's anything better um, you know people say to us often are you so sad he's in a wheelchair? No, uh, he can live a perfectly fine and productive life in a wheelchair. We can accommodate him in a wheelchair and he doesn't know that your legs are different, yeah. you know? So he's happy and he has the best quality of life. It's funny because I post all these pictures and you know, put all these little, you know, Jasper loves the water and he's so happy. He's so independent. Yeah, this newborn, the crab needs to be on newborn screens across the country. Why wouldn't it be? I don't understand. I mean, 
We can do so many things in the medical world and justify it. We can't justify this test to go on every newborn screen and give these kids a fighting chance, you know? I mean, we dump so much money into so many areas of, you know, in the medical world, and this is a blood test that's already working. There's a solution to help slow down the progression of the disease. This isn't a wasted test. It's not like, well, we'll find out and there's nothing we can do. No, there are some treatment options. So I don't understand why it's not done. And I think that we as a society, not adding it to the newborn screens, are really doing a disservice to our kids um, or the population that end up being diagnosed with Crabbe because it's a death sentence and we're just saying, okay, we're okay with that. He's very independent. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he wants and when he wants it. What he's brought to us, a lot of joy. He just started counting. He crawls anywhere he wants to go. He hangs out in his brother's room like, all day, if you let him. He gets into stuff just like uh, any mischievous little toddler. He has found a new game where he likes to throw the um, dog's food into the water bowl. Yeah, and, and Mike, <laughs> Mike gets so frustrated about it. And Jasper, don't. Jasper, stop. And I finally told Mike the other day, I was like, this is what toddlers do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, so it's, it's neat he's because he's, yes, yes, he's age appropriate. The things that bring us comfort and joy and make me happy is, you know, he's eating. He's eating a ton, this kid. He loves it. And, and but he tells us when he doesn't, like we know he hates anything with red sauce. He loves French fries, you know. Um, we have to be careful about the liquids because he does take thick and liquids, but you know, he'll, he'll snack on a milkshake here and there. And you know, and those are things that are like, oh, because when, he was little, he, he was so nauseated and sick and just didn't feel good, so he wouldn't eat anything. And I really thought we were gonna have this kid that was too fed for the rest of his life. This tube is now a, a means of supplementing what he's not taking throughout the day, and that's huge.